so the first thing that we're going to start with here is going to be analyst ratings. Uh, we are. I'm going to show you not only how to use analyst ratings as well as some tips on using the two tools where you can get this data, but I also want to show you how to remove some of the noise in that in, in the tools. And, and what I mean by that, and let me actually just show you. Okay, let me let me just show you. So the first thing I'm going to do here is click the plus button at the top. And then I'm actually going to use one of our presets here. And a lot of these demonstrations, I actually just build it using the individual tools. But you'll notice we actually have one here called Analyst Ratings Monitor. This is a preset workspace. So I'm just going to use that. When you hover over one of these presets, you'll notice that on the left here, it highlights the tools that are included in that preset. So when I mouse over Analyst Ratings Monitor, you'll notice that Newsfeed and Calendar are uh, highlighted in yellow on that left-hand list. That's gonna tell you the tools that are involved in this workspace. So let's go ahead and launch that. Okay, so we've got two tools here. Let's take a look and dive in uh, to what we have here. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna start with is the news feed. So we're gonna start on the right half of the screen here. You'll notice just by glancing at the feed that it is all pretty much analyst rating stuff. But we're going to go in here, examine some of the settings, and maybe change some of those settings. Okay. So I'm going to click on sources. And notice here that you have a couple of things checked. You have Benzinga Wire and you have press releases. Okay. Well, Benzinga Wire, if I click on that, it's got a little minus sign in here. I understand that might be difficult for the viewers, but you should be able to see it better on your own terminal. It's got a little minus sign in here. And what that denotes is that one of the child categories is selected, but the parent is not. So basically I didn't select everything in Benzinga Wire. Instead, I selected only analyst ratings, okay? If I, and you can see here in the list, nothing else is checked. Now let's take a look at that analyst rating section. You'll notice how this, instead of having the little dash, it actually has a check. Well, when I click on the word analyst ratings, the reason it has a check instead of a dash is because all of the child categories are selected here. So again, when you select one or several, but not all of the nested or child categories, your filter here will show a dash in the checkbox and it will show a check if everything in that hierarchy has been selected. So it's just one quick way where you can kind of understand what it is that you have checked and what should be displaying. Now, the, the bigger part here is that all we want is analyst ratings news, right? So we're going to leave all of these checked. If it turns out that all you want are things like upgrades or upgrades and downgrades or upgrades, downgrades, and initiations, you can select only those. So the first way that you can filter out noise whether it's for analyst ratings or otherwise, is by using very, very specific categories. Now, the trade-off here is that, let's say I uncheck one that says price target. That means any new analyst rating that comes in that's just a price target, I'm not gonna see. So make sure before you use this that that's actually what you want, all right? Uh, for the case of the example here, I want all of them. I will differentiate between price target changes and initiations, upgrades, and downgrades on my own. Give me all of the analyst rating information, okay? The other thing that we have checked here was press releases. Now, if I go back here, you'll see that uh, press releases are, are you, we don't do analyst ratings via press releases. They're, the company does not issue a press release when an analyst decides to cover the stock. So we're actually going to disable this category. I'm simply going to check the box so that it is unchecked and then press done. Now, the result here is that the only thing that I have in this news feed are analyst ratings. So it's in chronological order. You'll see that this will update automatically here. And you'll notice that this is not specific to an individual stock. Now, this is a lot of information. Um, maybe you do have the time to kind of go through all of these, but maybe this is just simply too much. So there's a couple of things that you can do here. And again, still just staying in the uh, news feed here, there's a couple of ways that we can kind of make sense of this data. 
The first one is the easiest one. If what you're saying is, I want to see the most or the most recent analyst ratings for any stock, I mean, pick a stock. I'll use Meta as an example because that just reported earnings last night and had some re-ratings today, so it should be a fresh example. If I just want to see Meta, simply type the ticker in at the top and then select it from a dropdown. This is literally the easiest method of filtering the news feed whether it's analyst ratings or anything else. So here you go, Thursday, August 1st, 2024. Here are all of the different ratings for Meta. The good part about doing this in the newsfeed is I can actually scroll back here real quick and at a glance, see if there were any others like TD Cowan here um, or Loop Capital reiterating a buy here. So again, all of this is information. Um, all of this is um, analyst rating information. And you can get it very, very easily for individual stocks. Now, the other thing here is that this is not specific to just one stock. So if you wanted to say uh, Meta or Apple, you can actually add another ticker in there. And now those ratings will be in here too. Uh, here's a rating for Apple. Here are two more for Apple. JP Morgan maintaining overweight and raising the price target to 265. Apple reports today, so it'll be interesting to see um, whose rating was correct. And it'll also be interesting to see who is going to do re-ratings tomorrow. Furthermore, little pro tip here. We know Apple's earnings is tonight. Sometimes analysts will actually stick their neck out and they'll make a rating, uh, either a rating change or a new initiation or an upgrade or a downgrade. Sometimes they'll stick their neck out and do that ahead of earnings. Now, you'll notice here, for the sake of Apple, let's go ahead and add Amazon in there as well, because they also report earnings. Um, here we go. So I don't see any Apple in here. And the only Amazon one is actually an article that has to do with analyst ratings. So this isn't a rating itself. This is just an article about Amazon. Now, that still might have very valuable content. Looks like they're doing some technical analysis there and examining key levels. But this is not what um, this is not an actual rating. So I can tell just very quickly today that no analyst um, upgraded, downgraded, or initiated coverage on Apple or Amazon ahead of the report. I would expect to see some re-ratings tomorrow, depending on what happens. Generally speaking, when an analyst does this ahead of the report, that is a signal that they are extremely confident in their research, and they're not even going to wait for, that, for those numbers to come out. So factor that into your trade plan, uh, but that's one way that you can do this, okay? Or that's one little pro tip there. Now, a couple of other ways where you can kind of filter this news feed um, to kind of remove some of the, the noise here. There's two other things that I want you to pay attention to. First of all, uh, watch list. This is the easiest way to filter a news feed by a group of stocks. You just saw me add Apple individually and then Amazon individually. Well, if you have a list of 30 of them, I mean, I'm sure you guys don't want to sit there typing out 30 different tickers. So what you can do is you can assemble watch lists much like I do. You can see I've got a ton of them here. I'm actually going to go ahead and use the one that says main. because That's the main watch list. And then boom. Now, here are all of the analyst ratings for stocks that I consider are the main stocks that I watch or that I look at on a regular basis is it took me just a couple of clicks to do this. I can leave this feed like this and I can, I will always know that as long as I come back here, these will show me the most recent analyst ratings changes for the stocks on my watch list. Now, um, if you don't have a watch list, so let me go ahead and turn this off. If you don't have a watch list or you don't have specific stocks that you're trying to monitor analyst rating changes on, there's a number of different ways that you can back into that. Um, one of the ways here is actually using some of the scanner filters on our newsfeed. You do that by using the scan or by clicking on the scanner button at the top of the newsfeed here. So let's say you only wanted a good example here is going to be something like price market cap would be another example, but I'm actually going to save the market cap example for the next tool here. So let's use price. All right. Let's say that you want to know all of the analyst ratings for stocks that are under $50, right? You're trying to figure out what is the next stock that's really going to appreciate in price. Let's see what analysts have to say about that. I can use that. I can press done. And now what you're seeing here, the, the end result of what we just did is it's only going to display news results that, that apply to stocks that have a ticker price under $50. 
Now you can verify that simply by mousing over all of these tickers and it will show you the price in the pop-up. And please notice that all of these are under $50. Now what that doesn't do, this is a great example, okay? Tenable Holdings, ticker TENB. The stock price itself right now is under $50. But this rating here, this is Piper Sandler maintaining an overweight. They lowered the price target to 55. So the price target is actually still above the filter that we just set in there because the filter that we set is for the actual stock price. So this can be a way to figure out what those analyst ratings are on those different types of stocks in terms of price level. It's worth noting that you can do this on any of the filters in here. So I encourage you to use any of the filters that are available within these tools to help you. I would probably start with price because it's really, really easy. And when we move over to the calendar here, I'm going to show you how to use market cap. You can use market cap in the news feed as well, but I'm going to demonstrate that here on the calendar. Okay, so um, this should help. This should really kind of help uh, remove some of the noise, um, remove stuff that you don't necessarily care about so that you're not staring at a wall of upgrades here. I mean, there was a lot of activity here today. You might care about some of these, but might not care about others. Okay, one more thing to mention here that I, I want you to keep in mind. If you know of a date that there was a rating, like you said, oh man, I, my buddy told me that on May 16th, um, there was a really good rating, but I can't remember what the ticker is. There's actually a way to use Pro to figure that out too. When you're in this news feed that's filtered to only show you analyst ratings, you can actually use the jump to date feature. And you can click here, jump to date. Let's go back a couple of months. I just made up an example. I don't know if there was anything there, but let's go back to May 16th, which was a Thursday. And we're actually going to start this at like 6 a.m. Okay. And we're going to click jump to, and the newsfeed just takes you there. So now I can look at this and I can say, okay, what was that stock? What was that stock that, that my buddy was to? Oh God, that's right. Palo Alto. It was Palo Alto, the cybersecurity firm, of course. Well, KeyBank maintained overweight on Palo Alto and raised the price target to 384 that day. Ah, okay. Very, very easy to even go back in history and find out what some of those analyst ratings are. Remember what an analyst rating is. This is what an analyst thinks the price of the stock will go to within the next 12 to 18 months. So you very well might find yourself in a situation where you said, uh, about six months ago, there was a rating on this date. What was what was it? Um also, all you'd need to do is get that date ballpark correct, because notice the platform jumped me back to May 16th, but I can scroll in either direction here. So here's May 15th. If I scroll up, I can go to, uh, well, here, May, here, we're still on Thursday, a lot of analyst ratings. I picked a good day, didn't I? If I keep scrolling up here, here's... Um, May here we go. Here's uh, Friday, May 17th. And then if I'm done with this and I just need to go right back to the top, you can just click that little blue button, takes you right to the top of the feed. So learn how to navigate through the news feed. This can help you not just with analyst ratings, but with other news categories and catalysts. Um, last thing to mention here about the newsfeed, one of the reasons that the preset has both of these tools in here is because the way the calendar, which is the next tool that we're going to talk about, works in Pro. Uh, simply put, the newsfeed updates on a real-time basis. The calendar updates procedurally behind the newsfeed. So it's possible that a news print or an analyst ratings print hits the newsfeed and then five or 10 seconds later populates the calendar. So if that type of latency is important to you, I, I advise uh, opening both of them. I like to do it like this because I want to, if, you know, if I want to be able to jump back in the newsfeed or if I want to be able to uh, see or filter using some of the newsfeed filters, I just have it available. Mm -hmm.